All right, well, welcome and uh, to another session of Mr. Jensen teaching some cal or pre calculus with you guys. Today we're doing ST5, we're doing even more trig equations. Uh, this should be our final lesson on solving trig equations. So, uh, just so you know, that uh, lessons I think three, four, and five were all solving trig equations. On one of them, we solved with infinite solutions, uh, on the last one, we solved with solutions of 0 to 2 pi. Um, and we were looking at when the inside value was like a sign of 2x or 3x, and we had a u substitution. And then today what we're doing is we're going to solve some equations that uh, solving the equation itself uh, may not be as straightforward of how we do it. Uh, we're going to solve the solutions in the interval 0 to 2 pi. And without further ado, let's get to it. Uh, this is problem number 1, 4, cosine squared uh, of x minus 2 equals 0. So if I want to solve something like this, my goal is to isolate cosine of x. Um, so I'm going to add the 2 over, and I get 4 cosine squared x equals positive 2. I'm going to divide by 4, and so I get cosine squared x equals 2 divided by 4, which that reduces to uh, 1 half. And remember, we talked a lot about this, that cosine squared of x, when we introduced this language, Cosine squared of x really is the same thing as cosine of x squared. It's the way that we would undo squared in mathematics is we're going to square root both sides. When I do that, then I introduce square root to both sides here. Uh, on the left side, we're going to remember this is just going to be cosine of x. On the right side, I have plus or minus square root of 1 half. Now, if I just had x equals square root of 1 half, uh, plus or minus square root of 1 half, I would normally stop here. However, because I'm still trying to solve for x, I need to simplify this to see if it's a value on my unit circle that I can evaluate. So I take a uh, uh, radical 1 half, and hopefully remember that the square root of a fraction is the same thing as square root of the numerator over square root of the denominator, which is the same thing square root of 1 is 1, 1 over radical 2. And when we rationalize that multiplying top and bottom by radical 2 over radical 2, I get uh, this to be radical 2 over 2. And so what we should realize is that this is the same as this. Uh, what we should also realize is that radical 2 over 2 is the value that's on our unit circle. And so I want to know when does cosine of x equal plus or minus radical 2 over 2. Because radical 2 over 2 is the same thing as this. Well. Uh, plus or minus means when does cosine, the x value on the unit circle, equal both uh, either positive radical 2 over 2 or negative radical 2 over 2. Uh, and I only want solutions between intervals 0 to 2 pi. So I don't have to do any of that n pi stuff. I just think of the values in the unit circle that that's true of. In this case, that's going to be true when x is equal to all the pi over 4s. So I got pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4 and 7 pi over 4. And so here we're able then to get uh, our four solutions that would satisfy this equation uh, and we're able to solve our first problem. Alright, so we're on to problem number two. On problem number two, uh, the equation looks a little bit different. It's 2 cosine squared x minus sine of x minus 1 equals 0. Uh, what should maybe ring in your mind is that this was similar to a problem that we did uh, on one of the previous days of notes where we had something like, uh, it was like 2 sine squared uh, x uh, minus, you know, like 3 sine of x, uh, I don't know, uh, maybe like plus 1 equals 0, something like this. And notice this, then we used u substitution to write the problem in this format, 2u squared minus 3u plus 1 equals 0. And we said we could do this if we let u equal sine of x. So if I remember that, uh, we use u substitution so that we could then replace sine of x with u in both cases, then this problem was uh, very possible for us to use our good factoring skills to solve this. Um, here though, you'll notice on this problem that it's a similar format, it's uh, cosine squared and sine, however because they're not all sines or all cosines, it causes us a little bit of an issue. Okay? So because they're not all sines or all cosines, then what we need to do is we need to rewrite cosine in terms of sine or sine in terms of cosine. Well, I don't have a good way to write sine in terms of cosine, but I can write cosine squared in terms of sine by using the Pythagorean identity. I remember the Pythagorean identity that we're going to talk about is that sine squared of x plus cosine squared 
of x equals 1. And if we solve this for cosine squared, that cosine squared of x is equal to 1 minus sine squared. And again, the reason I'm doing this is I'm going to substitute in cosine squared for 1 minus sine squared in here so that everything's in terms of sines, uh, sines and sine squared in numbers. When I do that, here's what this looks like. 2. Oh, no, don't die me. Ah! Well, we're going all blue. Uh, 2 parentheses 1 minus sine squared x minus sine of x minus 1 equals 0. When I do this, I can distribute the 2 in here. And so I get 2 minus 2 sine squared x minus sine of x minus 1 equals 0. When I do that now, uh, I'm going to combine this 2 and the negative 1 to be positive 1. So I got negative 2 sine squared x minus sine of x plus 1 equals 0. Because I combined 2 and negative 1, and I got positive 1 here. Uh, I am going to set this up the factor here in a sec. But one of the issues that I tend to have with these problems is I hate having a negative a value. And because this is an equation equal to 0, I can multiply both sides of my equation by negative 1. Uh, and that makes this a positive 2 sine squared x plus sine of x minus 1 equals 0. And so now I'm set up here to let u equal sine of x. And then this will turn into a problem that we can factor. So as we go after this problem now, um, I'm going to let u equal sine of x. And when I do that, I just turn the problem into 2u squared plus u minus 1 equals 0. At this spot, what I would love for you guys to do is pause the video and try to factor this. And then come back uh, and see if you're able to factor it. Uh, substitute back u for sine of x and solve. Okay? Well, welcome back. Hopefully you guys are able to do that. Uh, I'm going to show my factoring up here. If I have uh, 2u squared plus u minus 1 equals 0. I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to negative 2 and add to positive 1. That's going to be, uh, what's that, positive 2 and negative 1. So this is, I can write this as 2u squared plus 2u minus 1u minus 1 equals 0. I factor a 2u out and I get u plus 1. A negative 1 out, I get u plus 1. Um, I have a u plus 1 in common. A 2u minus 1 equal to 0 left over. Um, this would be then when u is equal to negative 1. This is true when uh, u is equal to, what's that, positive 1 half. And then I'm almost done, but I'm not done because I need to replace u with what we let it equal to. Go back to sine of x. So then I get sine of x equals negative 1. And sine of x equals negative 1 half. At this spot now, what I need to do is I need to stop and think when on my unit circle, because I only want solutions 0 to 2 pi, does this equal negative 1? Uh, this is true when the y value is negative 1. That's at 3 pi over 2. And then, at, uh, sorry, this is positive 1 half, sorry. Uh, sine of x equals positive 1 half. Uh, when the uh, y value is 1 half, that's at pi over 6. And then over in quadrant 2 at 5 pi over 6. So x equals pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6. And so here for this problem, we're able to get uh, three answers. All right, here we go. We're on to problem number three. Problem number three is going to get a little bit trickier here. Uh, we're going to start getting to some of the more, uh, more challenging or difficult trig equations to solve. In problem number three, I'm looking at this equation, sine 2x equals sine of x. And it looks so simple and so easy. Um, but let me encourage you or not encourage you, uh, caution you deceptively, uh, this problem is what, much more challenging than it may appear. Uh, one way to do it, so I've seen students before, is to sit there and start guessing angles that work for x, so that 2 times that angle is equal to sine of those, it still works out. Um, I would never really encourage that. However, if I was taking a multiple choice test or something like that where I had to, I had to go that route, uh, that is an option um, where you could just test values in there. Um, the way that we want to go about it uh, is we're going to uh, break down um, this Notice, uh, even if I do sine of 2x and I subtract over the sine of x over the other side of the equation, that we can't solve this here because uh, there's, these are two different uh, values inside. We can't use u substitution for 2x because then we have to write this u in terms of 
like, or this x in terms of u, which would cause more problems for us. So our strategy that we're going to try on this problem is we're going to take our double angle formulas that we've been learning. Uh, we learned in ST2, I think. Uh, we're going to take those double angle formulas and we're going to rewrite sine of 2x using its double angle formula. So you'll remember, you'll see on that sheet that you have that sine of 2x is equal to, I think it's 2 sine of x cosine of x. And so this is our double angle formula, which means when I see sine of 2x, I'm allowed to write it this way. And so I'm going to do that here. I'm going to write this as uh, 2 sine of x cosine of x minus sine of x equals 0. Now when I do that, um, I notice that in both of these, uh, I have, uh, I still have a challenging problem, but in both of these terms, I have a sine of x. And so what I can do now is I can factor a sine of x out front. And when I do that, I get sine of x times parentheses 2 cosine of x minus 1 equals 0. And so you'll notice now I have a number times a number equals 0. And so this is kind of like in factored form where we can set each of these equal to 0, okay? Because a number times a number equals 0, that's the zero product property. That's true if either this number equals 0 or if this number equals 0, 2 cosine of x minus 1 equals 0. Uh, now we can use sine of x equal to zero. That's when the y value is uh, zero. Um, so we're going to try to think of values so that's true. Right? And then over here, uh, this is going to be uh, we would add one and divide by two. And so that's when cosine of x equals one half. Okay. And so now we need to think of values uh, on the unit circle where cosine of that angle equals uh, one half. Uh, what what is the x value that makes that true? Uh, we'll sure, what is the angle where the x value is equal to 1 half? And we're looking for, again, only solutions between 0 to 2 pi. Uh, what I would encourage you to do, just stay fresh with your skills, pause the video, and see if you can come up with those, and then unpause, and then feel free to come on back, so I'll give you a sec. Okay, uh, now that we're back, uh, hopefully you were able to get these spots. Uh, sine is the y value. The y value is 0 over at, uh, at 0. Because on the unit circle, that point is 1 comma 0. The y value is 0 here at 0 radians. So that's when x is equal to 0. It's also true over here at pi radians, because that's a negative 1 comma 0. That's where the y value is 0 as well. And so you may say pi. And some of you may say, oh, but on the unit circle, Mr. Jensen, isn't 2 pi here? Wouldn't that also be true over here? And I go, yeah, 2 pi is. However, the way that they've asked us is they want answers in the interval 0 to 2 pi. But notice, 0 is a bracket. So any solutions with 0 we want to include. And 2 pi is a parenthesis, which means 2 pi is not included. So I can't put 2 pi here. And if you put 2 pi here, you're wrong. So we're looking for 0 and pi here. Um, and then here, for cosine of x is equal to 1 half, that, I want the x value to be positive 1 half, uh, so that's going to be uh, here and here. That's when the x value is positive 1 half. That's going to be at pi over 3. And the other one is at 5 pi over 3. So hopefully you're able to challenge yourself a little bit, and hopefully you got them right. If not, make sure you get down those right answers before we move on to problem number 4. All right, we're on number four. This is our fourth and final problem that we're doing today, uh, in notes here at least. Uh, if you would do me a favor, I've been really appreciating the positive feedback, whether that's giving a thumbs up or typing a comment in the chat, like, hey, I get it, or this doesn't make sense, or you're my favorite pre-calculus honors teacher that I've ever had, because I'm probably the only one you've ever had. Um, all of those are all really good feedback from me, uh, and so I appreciate that. So with that said, let's try our fourth and final problem here. We have sine of x plus cosine of x equals 1. Uh, this problem, again, looks so close to Pythagorean identity, but this is not the Pythagorean identity. The Pythagorean identity is sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals 1. And these aren't squared. Um, you'll notice that if we subtract the 1 over here and set it equal to 0, this is not going to be factorable. You may also notice when looking at this problem that we... Uh, we have no way of using a double angle to like expand this or do something creative with it. And so now we have to employ yet another new strategy. Okay, and so like I said, today are all the kind of like the oddball solving trig equation ones. 
And here's what we're going to do. We're going to square both sides. The reason we're going to square both sides is because I know when I square this side, it's going to create a lot of terms, but I know some of those terms are going to be sine squared and cosine squared stuff. And I know I have really good options if I'm in terms of sine squared and cosine squared as far as using Pythagorean identities or different stuff like that. Okay? So I'm going to take this original problem. I'm going to square both sides. On this left side here, uh, remember that uh, sine uh, plus cosine squared, remember squared means times itself. And so we're going to have to distribute uh, twice, and we're going to have all those middle terms. I know that sine times sine will end up being sine squared. I know that sine times cosine, so I have sine squared, I actually do it here. Uh, sine times cosine is, we can just write that as sine of x, cosine of x. Then I do cosine times sine. I can write that in the order of sine of x times cosine of x. And then cosine times cosine is cosine squared. And so I have sine squared, I have cosine squared, and sine of x times, uh, sine of x times cosine of x plus sine of x times cosine of x, since these are the same term, we can just put a 2 in front, we can add those terms, and we can write that as plus 2 sine of x cosine of x plus cosine squared of x and then we know that 1 squared is just 1. Okay? When I go about doing that um, I have sine squared and cosine squared. Um, I remember that the reason I squared is to create these types of terms and I know that if I have sine squared plus cosine squared I can group them next to each other and they are equal to 1 using the Pythagorean identity. So this problem now turns into 2 sine of x times cosine of x plus 1 equals 1. Uh, at this point now, one thing I can try is I can subtract 1 from both sides. And when I do that, I get 2 sine of x cosine of x equals to 0. Now, we have a couple ways we can could, we could finish this problem. One way is you can recognize this is a double angle formula. We could go like put this back into a double angle as sine 2x equals 0 and do our u substitution or try to figure out how to solve that one. Um, that would totally work. Uh, however, because this is uh, two things being multiplied, if I divide both sides by 2 or multiply both sides by 1 half, then the way that I'm going to finish this problem is like this. I divide by 2 and I get here, and then I have two numbers being multiplied equal to 0. That's true when either sine of x equals 0, or when cosine of x equals 0. Uh, sine of x equals 0, we just did this in problem 3. You should get this to be, uh, that's true when the y values are 0. That's at 0 and pi. Again, we don't want to include 2 pi, and we're not doing any of the infinite solutions where we have the n pi stuff, because they ask for solutions just in this interval. Uh, and then here, um, this is when x is equal to x is equal to zero at the pi over two. So at pi over two and at three pi over two. And so again, what you should be doing is making sure you can get these values on your own. Uh, and again, you're going to get some good practice on it uh, both this week and next week are, are going to be just kind of a bunch of problems for you guys to solve some tricky equations. Uh, with that, guys, I really appreciate you guys taking the time to log in uh, on your own time and, and taking these notes down and doing the homework. Uh, keep it up, and if you have any questions or any concerns or you want to talk live, uh, feel free to reach out to me. Other than that, I hope you guys have a wonderful and great day. Take care.